Greetings, Clash Addicts. Jinsei here, back again with episode three of Jinsei's Training Camp. Brought to you by yours truly, as well as the clan Lost Phoenix 2. Wait for it. Aries. Yeah, I love the sound of that. All right, I'm really excited about today's episode. Today we're going to be talking about royal assassinations. Every good attack starts off with a good assassination. It's an essential piece to getting started right and getting that two-star win. But first, let's start off checking out these war stats. We've been together as a clan so far for a week. We got three wars under our belt, and look at this. 46 to 4, 40 to 15, 47 to 10. You know, we've been running these 25 versus 25 wars, and I'm starting to suspect that the enemy clans are only 25 members for a reason. Not that the bases haven't been hard enough, but man, they just cannot attack. But anyway, before we get into killing royals, I want to talk about these new war stats. Supercell has done a great job revamping the war stats. Take a look at that line right there, 18 two stars in this war. That is where it's at, folks. That's what's going to make or break you in clan wars, is being able to consistently two star bases. It is all about the town hall, getting in there, getting the town hall, so get good at it. All right, this next page is the war log, of course. Uh, some changes here is the uh, they changed up the color scheme. If it's gray, it's either a successful defense or it's an attack that didn't gain any stars for the war. Green gain stars and red of course is a failed defense but I really like how they change that up so you can easily identify who isn't uh, actually contributing to the war with the uh, attacks this is my absolute favorite page though check out all of the information on here each attack the number of stars gained how many stars counted the total stars all about stars they even have defensive wins on there how many times they were defended how many times they won that defense this is awesome information i'm actually going to put this in a spreadsheet and start tracking this and you know in my clan and stuff but uh great job rye guy for getting four stars pat on the back for me too getting four stars mcclellan with six stars he was getting some low hand hanging fruit but still that's awesome uh, Grunkins for four stars and Zizo for four stars. And check out the bottom two guys, Leo and Saifigans. Look at their defenses. Those guys were just ripped to pieces, but four out of five successful defenses, three out of four successful defenses. Every war, they've just been attacked over and over again, and again and again they've been defending. It's been great. So let's take a look at this first attack by Rai Guy. We're just going to take a look at how he lures the Royals, and we're going to dropping into slow motion here once he uh, actually starts to kill them but he's using barbarians some wall breakers to get in there deep if he needs to pull the clan castle and the royals over to the side now watch as he drops a couple barbarians and watch where he puts his wave of barbarians right in line with his troops he immediately drops uh, about four witches behind it then his clan castle and those witches before the barbarians are dead summon all those skeletons it's a little close of, for my comfort you know I like a little bit more standoff distance between my witches and wizards and the massive horde of skeletons that are killing the royals because of that splash damage from the enemy's wizards but uh, they're still well enough behind the uh, line of skeletons that they have no problems just blasting away and the witches just keep summoning more and more skeletons all right, eventually the royals go down, the wizards start working on the clan castle troops, and he basically, he's, he's got more witches than the enemy, so eventually the swarm of skeletons overwhelms. And that, that is a perfectly executed royal assassination. That's exactly how you want to do it. Great job, Rai Guy. And of course, he went on to win a successful two-star victory. All right, now for my attack here. Pull the dragon out of the clan castle, but it's with witches and wizards, it's really no no issue in that. And this leads me to my first point on a successful royal assassination, which is line up the enemy troops. They don't all have to get there at once, but use your barbarians judiciously to just get them in a nice line. And when you deploy your wave, make sure it's in line with the direction that the troops are coming. Second point, 
always keep five to six barbarians in reserve and drop three to four witches immediately after the barbarians. First thing out are the witches. Next, follow with about two to eight wizards. Uh, usually I start with two and then pop my clan castle, which has about another eight in there, and that is more than enough to take care of everything. Third, trust your witches. You don't need any more than that. You don't need to drop your royals. You don't need to drop... Well, right there I dropped a golem just in case to try and distract the dragon because I wasn't sure, but uh, trust your witches. They will just keep summoning those hordes of skeletons. And the sixth point, stand off distance. You want to make sure when you're deploying your witches and wizards that they have good standoff distance behind your barbarians to take the time they need to summon the skeletons and overwhelm the enemy. All right, now let's take a look at how not to do it. All right, sorry for throwing you under the bus, Busain, but uh, I mean, mistakes are learning experiences and and they're good for teaching tools. So I'm gonna use this attack here. All right, first off, don't ever ever lure with the golem. That is a huge waste of a very valuable resource, and that costs a lot of money to train it or a lot of DE to train a golem, and takes up a lot of housing space you don't want to waste those guys on a lure hogs barbarians wall breakers if you need them now watch what happens here didn't grab the king uh just has a clan castle and the queen fan of archers uh we did grab the king but the king's late there you, to the party but drops the wizards first and of course the skeletons swarm the wizards start killing them so he has to drop the queen now he's gonna drop the king, and then he's gonna drop a fan of wizards. Just look at how many troops are wasted trying to kill the royals. In a successful royal attack, every single one of those troops that you use to kill the royals should still be alive at the end of it. Now let's uh, zoom out here and see what the final result is after that very hard victory at uh, assassinating the royals not enough force left to really do anything significant to the base unfortunately like I said a successful royal assassination will either make or break you all right now this is a replay I, I did this on purpose to prove a point to show you what exactly happens when you you don't get it right in that a lot of times if you spend too much time trying to lure the uh, the clan castle and the royals in exactly the right position with your barbarians you won't have enough barbarians at the end to get your witches out that's why i say save five or six all right don't waste them trying to herd them just get them in a nice straight line and here in a second i'm going to drop about three barbarians and then i'm going to be really slow on the draw getting my witches out and watch what happens that king up there up front just one swipe and he kills them here come three barbarians. First barbarian down. Second barbarian down, and then I drop a witch. Third barbarian down, and of course, before this witch gets any skeletons out, the king has already targeted her. And she goes down, only one witch left. Splash damage takes care of the rest because they closed in the gap and there's no standoff distance anymore. And so they just keep going to town, taking out my troops, and I have to waste a lot of troops just trying to get these simple level 10 heroes down. Eventually I pop my clan castle and now if something like this starts to happen, the way you can salvage it is to drop, go ahead and drop a golem to try and distract those troops and give your witches and wizards time to recover and start building those skeletons back up. But unfortunately, it was too late, too little for this attack. And, you know, I, I did it on purpose so I could use this for the video to show you how not to do it. But uh, still, failed attack. I sacrificed 17 cups for you guys. I hope you're happy. And of course, it's a fail. Not even close. All right, so that should give you a good idea on how to kill the royals. Hopefully that helps. 
I was so excited about this last war because somebody finally attacked me. I've been waiting so long for somebody to attack me. They keep avoiding me. I think they're scared of my base. But it was a very weak Go Eevee attack. So he's trying to lure with barbarians, but you're not going to get my clan castle or my royals with barbarians. you got to use hogs. Even wall breakers won't have any success. He tries getting my queen from the north there. Nope. So he just decides to go ahead with the attack. Sends his golems all bunched up in the center. Now, I specifically designed this base to really mess with wall breakers. Look at that boing. <laughs> They're des it's designed to draw the wall breakers anywhere but the center and when they finally get through all of the junctions and everything and get to the center they're dealing with wizard tower with infernos and there's just usually not enough wall breakers left at that point to break through to my inner sanctum and of course this case is no different clan castles going to town out there and I think he pretty much gave up at this point because he realized that this is a futile effort. That got me really excited. Finally! Finally a defense to say I want a defense because nobody's been attacking me. <laughs> now this! This was one of my attacks and oh my gosh I, I about pooped my pants near the end of it. I thought I was gonna miss that second star but uh just watch till the end. It's it's definitely worth it. Drawing the royals out. Couldn't really get the clan castle, unfortunately. My hogs failed me on that. There you go, my barbarians. Witches immediately after. Wizards. Two wizards is all I need here. LRC, Golems and Wizards on the wings. Once the Queen is down, I'll pop my Clan Castle. Get a couple Wall Breakers in there. Now a Bomb takes out a few of my Wizards there, unfortunately, and my Wall Breakers. Rage Spell, Free Spell. Now this is where it gets uh, a little frustrating here. Royals thankfully go straight into the center. Another free spell to protect them. King's on rage. Town Hall's going down. It's gonna be close. King starts dying. My measly little 11 level 11 king pop that rage just to solidify it and here I'm starting to sweat because I'm at 43 percent queen is going down and I don't have much force left and now she's working on that de storage which has uber hit points and of course she goes down and what do I have left a couple witches nope oh just a golem it's almost dead and three skeletons at 47%. It's gonna be a photo finish, folks. Here it goes. 48%. Three skeletons working. All right, here they go. Skeletons are gonna die here soon from an archer tower. And look, look at the health of that cannon and the health of my golems. Two golems left. Skeletons are dead. As soon as this one pops, 50% destroys the cannon and watch this last golem. Whee! See ya. All right, folks, this wraps up another episode of Jinsei's Training Camp. Thanks for watching. Check out Lost Phoenix Clan on Facebook and Twitter. And until next time, that is all.